right through the window. Yeah, <laughs> smash. <laughs> two favorite stores. My other favorite? HomeSense. What? Okay, let's bring you guys up to speed on what we're going to accomplish this episode. So this is the radiator outlet and that's got to jog across, dive through there and then get to that guy. But the thing is, is I have two options of doing this here. The first one is having it come straight across and then duck through the V-belt. I don't think I'm going to do it that way. I'm probably going to have it come out and then jog over top of the V-belt and then dive in through here and then connect right there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is uh, if the alternator is not perfectly lined up, I think it is, but if it's not, then it's, it'll probably start throwing belts. And then that means every time I have to replace a belt until I get it squared up, uh, I would have to remove the top hose to the radiator. And of course, by that point, it'll be all full of coolant. And that's something I don't want to deal with. The second thing I have to do is that is the outlet coming off the water pump. So that's got to come down here and then jog across and the inlet on the radiator is right down there, totally on the opposite side of the engine. Anyone want to buy a 71 Mustang? It's got the original motor in it. This one here would be good to make a couch out of the back end, eh? Oh yeah. So what are we getting today? We're gonna grab some sun visors. Out of what? The Cutlass Supreme on my left hand side. For what? My Monte Carlo SS. <laughs> Let's check them out. Oh yeah. They're a little rough, eh? Those ones? Yeah. Yeah, but compared to the other ones, I, I think I can salvage those. He needs a new air freshener. Yeah, man. It smells like socks. Getting some sun visors out of the Burrito Supreme. Yep. Someone had some fun with this thing, man. This little NA Miata looks like a bit of fun. Someone actually spent some time and effort on it. And someone who watches Slickworks is gonna know who once owned it and the story behind that. Have a little look. <laughs> it's got a quick release steering wheel. Carbon fiber. Cool little door handles on these cars. You can use them with many different applications. You'll see a lot of hot rods wearing those. Something about curved back glass. Just love it. Let's check it out. Decent. Missing the door panel. Oh, headliner is actually not bad. Yeah, there's your door panel. Huh. Got an aftermarket gauge cluster. I wonder what he want for that. That'll do.
face of the radiator is all painted up now. I haven't done the backside yet. Uh, but one issue that I ran into is uh, with the new hose that I got, with the new radiator hoses that I got, they're way too big, so there's just tons of wiggle room. So instead of finding another hose, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger, and I have an idea for that. I'm actually gonna use this. It's, uh, it's from a weed whacker. So I'm gonna wrap this around the outside of that, and then panel bond it in place, and that'll hold beautifully. And then I'll have to put my assistant, Stuart, to work. So the weed whacker line idea did not work out. Anytime I gave it any heat at all, it would just shrink. So I'm just gonna tape it off and freehand it. guys I gotta let you in on a little secret because I'm pretty pretty excited about this so as you know with any coolant lines you need like a bead on the end so that you can seal your hose to it right and I found some tools online that will slip into the end and then you crank it out and then it'll create a bead from the inside but I've made my own tool to do just that and when you buy the tool online you only get to buy one size but I'm pretty sure I could use this for many different sizes I'll show you check it out Okay, so I grabbed this old pair of vice grips and I made these two little plates and put a bunch of weld on the front and the back and then the middle of that one. And so now I have my own vice grip tool that actually creates a bead on pipes. And I made the top part, the top tooth there is actually curved so it'll work with different profiles and different pipe. And here's the results. Doesn't get much better than that. So that, that is a beautiful little bead roll. So that'll seal off a hose no problem. And all you have to do is just stick it in like that and then just give it a squeeze and work your way around the pipe like that. And then it just creates this beautiful little bead roll. So there's a tip for you guys. If you guys want to make a, a tool and don't want to spend the 60 bucks for the actual tool for it, I mean, there you have it. $10 set of vice grips kicking around in your toolbox. There you go. Nice work, Stu. Keep working. Stay off your phone. I gotta run to the store.
That is slick. Okay, well here it is. The top of the cooling system is done. And that looks awesome. Totally unique. So I've got all my elbows in and a whole lot of clamps. Uh, now I've got to start tackling the bottom. And then I'm going to get this out of the way. And I'm going to make something a little nicer than that piece of junk. But yeah, very excited about this. Now I've got to find something unique for the catch can. I don't know what I'm going to use. But it's going to go down there. Yeah, there we have it. Super stoked about that. No, not that one. Leave that one there. Uh-oh. It's one of those. Can you see if you can match that up? What size is that? It's this one. Can you see if you can match that up with one of those? Okay, so it's been about a week since I've worked on this thing. Uh, this is pretty much done. I gotta blow it apart. I have some new clamps for the inside of the filler neck there because that's actually quite a bit smaller than uh, than this pipe here. But my new dilemma is the water pump there. It's like it needs a, a hose that's like an inch and three quarter inner diameter. So I need to step down because that's like an inch and a an inch and three eighths diameter. So I need a step town that'll bring it down and I looked all over, tried to find one on Lord Co, Princess Auto, Home Depot, stuff like that. And I actually ended up finding one on Amazon. Now I didn't get video of the delivery driver so I'm going to reenact that as best that I can. Looks like my package was handled with care, which is the way you want your package to be handled. And here is my little step down from Amazon. Go figure. All right, the first piece of the puzzle is going on. The Amazon step down. Perfect. Amazon's pretty wild, eh? Remember the days of ordering stuff off eBay? Ordering off eBay is like having a baby. You wait nine months for it to arrive, and when it finally does, it's the wrong color. <laughs> okay, so I can't put this in because of the harmonic balancers in the way. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here. So what is it? We have that kick down in that direction. That should clear everything. All right, I'll cut that. Much better. Once that piece is in there, I'm gonna have this piece come back, come back to the radiator. I don't really like putting a sleeve in, especially on the water pump side, because that's where all the water is gonna be rushing out. So I don't want any resistance in there. Now, while I'm on that subject, it's worth telling you guys that when I was building the top piece, that sleeve, once I welded it on the one side, I took a carbide bit and I cleaned it up on both sides on the inside of the pipe to minimize restriction. Now the radiator's gotta go back in. I just found out something new about my car that I didn't know before. I'll show you guys. So the car has actually been in a major accident and I didn't realize that. How I know that, have a look at that. So it was probably hit on the back end somewhere and they probably used this hole as an anchor point to anchor the car to the ground while they did a hydraulic pull on the other end. And that hook, they probably didn't use the right hook and then that ended up just cutting itself a channel right through the frame rail here. 
So when I clean up the bottom of the car, I'll probably end up cutting out that little section and then just welding in a new little plate. But yeah, that's a shame. Okay, show you guys what I'm doing down here. I got that masking taped up so that jogs down from the water pump. Now I have this piece here. So that is gonna be cut at that 90. Yeah, I'll hold it like that there. Yeah, so that's gonna be cut there. And that's gonna be cut at that 90 and then that'll meet up with the uh, inlet on the radiator. Because I'm not gonna cut a tiny little pie cut to go in there, I'm welding welding rod onto one side, and then once that side's done, then I'm gonna weld welding rod on the other side, and then run a weld across everything. And that way it'll fill up the gap, it'll still be nice and thick, and it won't get any porcupine quill sticking out on the inside of the tube. Okay, well there's the piece all done. So it's ready to go in. One more test fit and then I'll figure out how to hang this thing so that I can paint it. Whoop, kind of hard to see down here, but. Okay, so there's my water pump. So that one slides into there. Come on. There it goes. Okay. All right, so that's in there. Mostly, sort of. And then once this is lined up, that'll, uh, it's gotta come over. It's gotta go in a little bit more over there, but yeah, once that goes in, then that'll be perfectly lined up. So, happy with that, time for paint. So I used this nice looking stuff uh, for the top pieces. And those look really mint, but I, I ran out. So I used uh, this that actually the previous owners of this house were kind enough to leave for me. Just some power fist garbage, but you know what? It actually turned out looking really good. Like that stuff's actually pretty decent. It's kind of uh, almost like a polished aluminum look to it. So I'm gonna use that again. Who knew? Princess Auto Power Fist. That looks good. Ah, oh, stoked. Black is done, all the bare steel is covered up. Now for where the battery box and the catch can is gonna go, I'm gonna use a little gravel guard because this stuff is like a rubberized undercoating sort of stuff. And because it's out of a can, it's not catalyzed, so it'll always stay rubbery, whereas some of the catalyzed stuff, you spray it on and then it winds up uh, becoming rock hard and, and can actually flake off if you don't have proper adhesion. So I'll show you what it looks like when this is done. All right, so I've just freehanded that, and that texturized gravel guard looks pretty nice in there. Put some on the front of the frame rails too, because it was all just covered in weld spatter, so. Yeah, this stuff's great. Uh, the amount of texture that you get depends on how close or far away you're holding the can. So once I unmask it, uh, it's gonna look great. And then once this cures, I'll be back for one more day to repaint this in that <laughs> surprisingly good uh, Princess Auto garbage paint. So I'm gonna use the garbage paint on the rad cradle 
and then reassemble it. Once that's all done, then that'll be the end of episode 11. This guy's computer's date's all messed up. Seen by Eric, December 31st, 1969. Wait a minute. What happened December 31st, 1969? I got this can here and we all know that that cap is a total lie and the paint never actually ends up looking like chrome like that but I'm not gonna repaint that and I'm gonna keep the garbage paint because I'll use it somewhere else I'm gonna use this on the rad cradle so let's see how that goes also I sprayed the gravel guard while the lacquer wasn't fully cured so it wound up looking like this weird desert lake texture where it's kind of half gloss and half gravel guard but I don't hate it it kind of looks a little bit like gator skin. Oh, it looks just like chrome. No, it doesn't, but it looks fresh and nice. Today is a day that I have been dreaming about since I started doing this whole radiator thing. Uh, today is assembly day. So I've got all my rubber couplers here, I've got handfuls of clamps, I've got my hard lines, got my radiator over there. Time to install everything. Well, there we have it, folks. That's it. It's all done. Top line looks great. Still need something cool for the catch can, but man, does that look sweet. Yeah, I got these heavy duty clamps, so that sucked that hose down. There's no way you could break those clamps, so that is definitely sealed. And yeah, coming off the water pump, that guy dives down underneath and winds up right where it should be. Well, thanks for watching guys. This has been a really neat process. I definitely learned a ton. I hope you guys learned something too. That little vice grip tool was absolutely life-changing. Totally necessary for making these hard lines. And I'm confident that they're not going to leak. If you guys would like to support the channel, hit that subscribe button. That would be a big help. Now we got a lot of cool stuff coming up in the next episode. So stay tuned for episode 12. brought to you by EIE. It's not just another venture, it's a lifestyle. What started off as kind of a cool idea has now become international. Many different people in many different countries are rocking the EIE t-shirts. So if you want t-shirts, hats, jackets, baby onesies, you name it, visit EIELifestyle.com or click the link in the description.